Hey guys, Ron here, and some time ago I made a video about the most controversial Pokemon. So let's take it a step further and talk about the most controversial Pokemon characters in every generation. The most important thing you gotta keep in mind is that I'm not talking about characters that garnered some kind of controversy in pop culture or anything outside of the fanbase like Jinx and Porygon, but rather characters that Pokemon fans cannot agree on. This is a list of polarizing or divisive characters. These aren't necessarily unpopular characters. In fact, many characters on this list are so popular that they have a group of haters. The common denominator is that they all received some sort of backlash. My job is basically to explain why there are so many contradicting opinions surrounding these main series Pokemon characters. So that means nobody exclusive to the anime like Go or Tobias will be mentioned. Let's naturally begin with Generation 1, honestly the shortest list considering there aren't many characters in Kanto that do anything. So number 2. Brock. A popular character with many different receptions by fans. In game, depending on the starter you chose, he can be a forgettable challenge or a harsh first boss that you will never forget. And as a game character with the most screen time in the anime, fans have had time to form long complicated opinions on the man. To some, he's Ash's most reliable and humorous companion, while to others he harasses women left and right in gags that do not age well. I mean he was replaced for that same reason but brought back because of his popularity, one of the few characters here with actual controversies. And number one is… Blue. A classic example of a character some fans hate and some love to hate. Many people point at Blue as the ideal rival, one we want to defeat and who can give us a good challenge, while many others will describe Blue as the most shallow rival. He simply wanted to be the best and is a generic jerk for the sake of it. Some fans find him to be the least interesting and generally insufferable. It gets even more complicated because some may have hated him as a rival but do appreciate his development in later games. Simply a character many cannot agree on, and therefore the most divisive character from Generation 1. Time for Generation 2. Definitely a few more controversial characters from Johto. Number 4. Lance. Fans thought he was cool as a Gen 1 Elite 4 member and even cooler as an undefeated champion. Dragon Tamers have always been uh, the most revered trainer class and his team is clearly severe, but there are many fans who find him to be one of the most boring champions with a relatively flat personality. Perhaps the multiple Dragon Knights rubs them the wrong way, or they can acknowledge his team but don't see what makes Lance so cool especially since half of the fandom thinks his outfit is a bit goofy. He is nothing more than his title. Number 3. Silver, the last of the traditional jerk rivals. Many fans find him more interesting than Blue, since he has an arc within the game he debuts in and has a canonical backstory we all know and love. As the son of Giovanni, we can at least see why he acts the way he does, but a good amount of players simply don't find him to be challenging at all, don't appreciate his attitude and actions, and understandably may not even care about his backstory since it's not even in the game. Number 2. Claire. As the strongest gym leader in Johto, one of the most beautiful characters in the franchise and one of the few in her region to have ties to other characters, her cousin Lance in this case, as well as story elements outside of her gym, many fans gravitate towards Claire. But there is a large circle of fans that find her insulting, considering she doesn't give you a badge after defeating her fair and square, especially taking into account how formidable she is. She comes off as a spoiled adult, but I'd personally spoil her any day. Number 1. Whitney. This girl's Miltank is known as one of the most surprisingly problematic aces in the franchise, but the reception to Miltank is kinda split. Some love the challenge and therefore love Whitney, some enjoy the challenge but don't attribute it to Whitney, and some hate the challenge and feel Whitney is responsible for their unsavory loss, but when they do win, Whitney's tantrum leads people to perceive her as a brat. I don't know what's up with Game Freak in making the female Johto gym leaders such sore losers. Gen 3 is next, slightly less controversial characters. Number 3. Wallace. As the strongest gym leader in Hoenn with a wonderful personality and appearance outside the gym, Wallace is thought to be an ideal Pokemon character to some, while others may just not like flamboyant characters and are salty about him replacing Steven as champion in Emerald. One fan could absolutely love Wallace, while another could find him to be among the worst champions. Number 2. Wally. The confusion over Wally's popularity is probably a result of him originally not being a well-developed character in Ruby and Sapphire, and one of the most forgettable rivals, but his glow up in Generation 6 made him extremely popular, with his characterization and design more expertly handled and battle music that solidified Wally as a noteworthy rival. But a lot of fans simply didn't feel it was enough, considering there's still a huge gap during his development, which means him overcoming his illness and gaining confidence was all off screen, and his battle was nothing to write home about. Another possible case of an overrated character. Number 1. Norman. 
He has one of the most interesting gym leader teams with a powerful slacking that gave us all a run for our money. Many fans appreciate the first and only inclusion of our father in any main series Pokemon game, but as a somewhat absent father who doesn't act all that paternal, there are a great deal of players who find him to be far from a role model. His parenting itself is controversial, but since when has anybody agreed on how to raise a child? Gen 4 has some unconventionally controversial characters. Number 4 Looker this man has his fans who find him a refreshing change of pace, a handsome old friend, and an admirable, and an admirable, and an admirable, and an admirable, I can't say admirable, I'm sorry, an admirable, an admirable enforcer of the law. While others shrug whenever he appears, cringe at his odd way of speaking, and associate him with some of the worst post games they've experienced, he's simply involved with hit or miss plots, and it's up to you which look or mission you take to heart and which ruins your relationship with this character. Number 3. Flint. He's considered one of the most memorable Elite Four members for all the good and bad reasons. He's very difficult to beat with one of the most unconventional Elite Four teams. People like his personality and relationship with Volkner, but many take him at face value and believe he has the worst design in Pokemon. They simply can't take him seriously. Some are also completely baffled by his inconsistent team in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Number 2. Barry. To fans of both jerk and friendly rivals, Barry seems to strike the balance between friendly and unyielding. He's not a pushover, but far from the strongest rival. He's memorable, but not for any deep reasons. Fans find him to either be energetic or annoying. His quirks make him fun or aggravating. He teeters on the edge of irritating, so just one piece of dialogue can make the difference between liking or despising Barry. And number one is... Cynthia the Charizard of Pokemon characters. As the most popular Pokemon character who is seemingly beloved by Game Freak as well, she appears in tons of media, especially over the last few years. But considering she really is arguably the toughest trainer in the franchise, is very easy on the eyes, and has a commanding presence, it's no wonder this elegant woman is so popular. But on the other hand, fans find her to be overrated and mild. Her story is relatively non-existent. For a champion, she may be interesting, but as a character, she barely does anything and lacks an interesting personality. She's like vanilla. She's the most popular character, but there are more complicated and exciting flavors of characters out there. But vanilla is also my favorite flavor, so... Gen 5 is when characters began to be more and more controversial now that Pokemon plots became more prominent and characters begin to be more diverse and transparent. Number 6 N As the second most popular character according to my fan poll, N unfortunately receives some hate for being a bit overrated, but even those who don't ride the N train can still admit he's possibly the best written character in the main series of Pokemon. With a great design, backstory, plot, personality, and actions, N is the full package, and some fans want N's package. But others are over his popularity and want him out of the picture. Admittedly, the backlash to his popularity is way less than, let's say, Cynthia, so he is low on the Gen 5 list. Number 5. Lenora at it again with another character that had an actual controversy. Her original design was suspiciously too close to a Mammy stereotype, so some fans held that against her while others didn't even know what the controversy was about. As a character, especially with her redesign, fans had no problem with Lenora. They even found her battle to be somewhat tough, but there was a group of fans who were left with a bad taste in their mouth. Number 4. Marlin. With so many characters in Gen 5 that only see extremes, we have Marlin, who is a hardcore centrist. He believes that every perspective is valid, but most people can only accept a person who picks a side, so both sides end up hating him. Others agree with his sentiments or don't read into it too much. They either find him to be too moderate in his convictions and disapprove of his false equivalencies, or enjoy his chillness. Some love his design as well, while others feel bamboozled that his skin is simply tanned and not in fact naturally dark. Number 3. Getsis, one of the most manipulative antagonists in Pokemon, a straight up villain with a genuine long term plan to take over Unova, the mastermind behind the most popular plot in Pokemon, and some intense fights in Gen 5. But while fans love him for that, the fact that he abused one of the most popular characters in the franchise kind of means he's going to be despised as well. He's the most unredeemable villains in Pokemon. Some people love that, and some people find it two dimensional, especially when many fans preferred the black and white plot to be nuanced, and were disappointed that Gatsis didn't really want to liberate Pokemon. Number 2 Iris. In game, she's a beloved gym leader and champion with a popular battle theme and respectable team. She rose through the ranks and is a praiseworthy prodigy, but in the anime, she is Ash's least popular female companion and relatively annoying. People mistake her in-game counterpart for being irritating even though she's pretty inoffensive in Pokemon Black and White. Some fans even liked her in the anime. I know, right? Number 1 Hugh Fans are totally split about their opinion of Hugh. 
To many players, his motivation to find his sister's stolen purloin is totally valiant. His blind hatred and rage towards Team Plasma is perfectly valid. His desire for you and himself to get strong in order to achieve his goal forms a believable rivalry. His character development going from seeing all of Team Plasma as evil to realizing that it isn't black and white and some members actually wanted to do good perfectly demonstrates the theme of the generation. Plus, his design is cool and he's one of the few friendly rivals that isn't a pushover or too amicable. A good balance of cool and friendly. But there are so many fans who don't sympathize with you, find his goals to be pathetic, dislike his outbursts, and haven't really understood his arc or don't really care about the message Hugh's story conveys. They simply mock the character who only ever talks about retrieving his sister's purloin. Even though, to the other fans, it's more nuanced than that. Gen 6 is next, number 5. Tierno. Trevor is technically more unpopular than Tierno, but considering Trevor doesn't really do anything offensive, people simply don't care about him. But to many fans, Tierno is insulting. His goals of creating a Pokemon dance team are considered to be incredibly uninteresting and silly for a rival. He isn't really a rival. He he's just a new acquaintance you battle a few times without any challenge. He's a perfect example of fluff. There are Tierno fans who appreciate his design and unique endeavors, but everyone can agree his execution was lacking. Number 4. Valerie. This one's simple. People either think she's super pretty or super creepy. Her fashion is adorable, but her eyes are unusual. Many find her face to be cute, while others can't uh, look at her straight. It's silly, I know, but many Gen 6 characters are here for simple reasons, like... Number 3. Diantha. People believe her to be the most underutilized champion. She has great potential, and a lot of fans love her for that. They adore her design, profession, music, and team, while many other players find none of that important. They use her as an example of X and Y's underdeveloped story, easy battles, and lackluster characters. To some, she is everything that is wrong with Kalos. Pretty, but hollow. Number 2. Zinnia. Zinnia is one of the most popular side characters in Pokemon, for her erotic pers erratic personality, interesting dialogue, and world-building lore, as well as her great design and battle theme. She's incredibly memorable, but a great deal of players find her obnoxious, hate the fetch quest nature of the Delta episode, are insulted by her treatment of Steven Stone, and loathe her overbearing diehard fans. Controversial fan bases do lead to a controversial character after all. And number one is... Lysander. There are a great deal of fans who find Lysander to be an interesting villain. They can admit Team Flare is terrible, but find Lysander to be the only saving grace. They understand his personality and love his design, while many other players believe his plot to be one of the worst in the franchise, abhor his look, and attribute the terrible story of X and Y to him. I mean, he tried to commit genocide. Either you like your villain to be that insane, or you want to be able to empathize with the actions of an antagonist. And I hope nobody can empathize with the idea of nuking an entire nation. The increase in relevant characters and plot contributes to Gen 7 having the most controversial characters so far. Number 8. Kahili. An inoffensive character, but even though this has been the case for generations, there are fans who hate her for being the only Sun and Moon Elite Four member who doesn't appear before the Pokemon League. They are baffled when she's introduced, while other fans love her design, theme, and team. Number 7. The Ultra Recon Squad. These invaders from another dimension appear to be relatively grey to many fans. They are roadblocks for most of the games, but aren't really doing anything that oppose our goals. Some fans empathize with their plans, while others don't understand them and believe they are bland. Many look at them as positive additions, while others associate them with the reason they don't approve of Ultra Sun and Moon's entire existence. Number 6. Sophocles. Close to the least popular trial captain, he's either despised for being the face of the Festival Plaza, a criticized feature, and the least charismatic of trial captains. Others find him quirky and charming and appreciate his design, or simply enjoy his anime counterpart. I honestly never know what people think of Sophocles. Number 5. Ilima, the actual least popular trial captain. This was a surprise when I asked fans. He has a memorable tough fight in the beginning of the game, a memorable personality and design, as well as one of the most gender neutral looking characters in all of Pokemon. I assume he has fans, while others may find him too smug for their liking or didn't enjoy his battle, or even worse, didn't even find his battle much of a challenge. Number 4. Lusamine. Okay. Now we have a big jump in controversy. We went from golfers, children, and pretty men in sweater vests who haven't really done anything wrong to a literal child abuser and eco-terrorist. But the difference here is that Lusamine is a very popular character. There is a vocal group that doesn't like her as a person for her many flaws and actions, but as an antagonist, many people like her backstory, personality, and schemes. Her botched storyline and vague goals in Usum make her even more controversial though. Number 3. Trace. 
the most unpopular rival and champion in Pokemon history. So why is he controversial? Because fans look at him with contempt for quote unquote replacing Blue, one of the most popular characters in Pokemon. To many, he's a pushover who is quite the opposite of Blue in personality. So what does that mean? He's just a nice guy who helps you out and adopts a Cubone. People really hate nice rivals. The disparity between the kind of inoffensive character he is in Let's Go compared to his extreme fan reception is why he's on the list. Number 2. How? The epitome of nice rivals. To a ton of fans, he represents the worst of friendly rivals in Pokemon. He's not even close to competitive, just wants to have fun and interrupts your exploration to talk about unimportant things and battle you. While to a ton of other fans, his battles were actually tough. They understand his inability to take things seriously is his response to the pressures of being the Kahuna's grandchild, and they appreciate his development at the end of Ultra Sun and Moon. Some are simply fine with friendly rivals and love his dynamic with a more popular rival, Gladion. And number one is... Lily. A perfect example for this list, one of the most beloved Pokemon characters in the franchise, number 6 according to my fan poll, but also one of the most despised characters in Pokemon as well. So many attribute her to the reason Sun and Moon is unplayable. She is the character who initiates the most cutscenes, the plot practically follows her, the game revolves around her, the world is Lily's and you're just living in it. While most fans find her interesting enough to follow her story and care about her development, and they find her to be the main reason why Alola's story is among the best in the franchise and want more characters like her. Gen 8 ties for the most controversial characters, you'll notice why. Number 8. Swordward and Shieldbert Another example of very unpopular characters, they are not actually divisive, but what they represent is. Many take their hatred of the twins too far and cite them as an example of Sword and Shield's inferiority, while many others may agree but see Galar's character designs as among the best in the franchise and one of the strengths of Gen 8, so the design and personality of these two isn't indicative of any flaw in this game's relatively popular cast of characters. Some may also not take them seriously and enjoy the laugh. Number 7. Melly. Again, another example of a super unpopular character. He's obnoxious, self-absorbed, and selfish, but some enjoy that kind of personality in their characters. They find him entertaining. He's simply controversial for, for just being an outlier. Most unpopular characters in Pokemon are simply boring, while this guy is actually hated. Number 6. Gordy the least popular Galarian gym leader, among a group of very popular gym leaders. So what went wrong? Well, some who played Pokemon Sword are disappointed that they didn't get to battle his mommy, I mean his mommy, I mean his uh, uh mother, Melanie, instead. In game, he's supposed to be the most popular gym leader with tons of female fans, but to some players he comes off as conceited. But those who love him appreciate his tastefully hefty design, find his swag charming, and his uniqueness interesting. Number 5. Bead. He's exactly what fans want, a rude rival, but as a character who isn't as formidable as Blue or as brutal as Silver to some, he just falls flat. They may not like his design or arc either. He's very entitled and not much of a serious rival. Many are just happy to have a mean rival again, while others may not even have wanted a mean rival in the first place. Number 4. Chairman Rose a relatively popular character but the least popular Pokemon antagonist. He goes from a mysterious and interesting character who piques your interest in terms of how he fits into the plot because we were all ready for his involvement, but once it was his time to shine, he was revealed to be an antagonist with the most preposterous goals in all of Pokemon, impatiently solving an energy crisis that'll manifest in 1000 years. This man couldn't wait one day for our champion battle to take place. The duality between a potentially great character and terrible execution makes him controversial. Number 3. Leon, a very good example. He's popular, so to many he really is the undefeated champion. A challenging threat with a quirky personality, interesting design, and compelling dynamics between multiple characters like Hop, Sonya, Rose, and Raihan. He's on everybody's minds, but the other half of fans find his design to be goofy, detest his personality, are annoyed that his entire existence as a champion revolves around the fact that he's the champion, and while his design is all over the place, that's kind of the point. He was a champion since childhood, and is a kid's interpretation of what a champion looks like. But people also hate that he has a Charizard, so that, I mean, that's probably the biggest reason. Number 2. Hop. One of the most controversial rivals. You'll be surprised to know that he's actually relatively popular. He has a big fan base that enjoys his personality and empathizes with his arc, finding it unique to have a rival that doubts their abilities and begins to experiment with his team. They are fond of his idolization of Leon, are proud of his development, and treat him like a true friend. Others find him to be the most annoying rival, who appears and battles you throughout the story, even though that's kind of what every rival does. They believe he has too similar of a disposition and character arc to Hal, despite him being competitive from the beginning, unlike Hal. 
Many fans especially hate how he takes a lot of the spotlight away from the other Gen 8 rivals. Speaking of which, number 1. Marnie The most popular rival in Gen 8, and according to my poll, the ninth most popular character as of late 2022. She is a phenomenon. I get it, her design is among the best in the entire franchise. The punk jacket over a pretty dress perfectly showcases her identity. Based on her look and upbringing, you expect her to be brutal, aloof, and maybe even cocky, when in fact, she's the sweetest girl who wants to do good, make her town proud, win fair and square, and even make friends along the way. This depth is unfortunately dispersed throughout the game, so it's easy to miss. But others may look for her character development when in reality, the development is how the player sees Marnie. Many fans view her as a waste of potential, mistake her inability to properly emote as a lack of personality, and believe her only purpose is to facilitate Team Yell's existence, which admittedly is far from worth it. They can't fathom what all her fans see in Marnie. This inability to see each other's perspective is the reason she is number one. And finally we have Generation 9. Considering the recency bias and open world, there aren't any really highly controversial characters. I obviously have a selection of about 5, but when I polled my viewers, only one of them was actually controversial. But perhaps I'll let you decide. Number 5. Clavel He's quite a popular character, his good intentions surprised many fans, and his antics were goofy and charming. It's clear he cares about his students, so there isn't any serious reason to dislike him. Even those that would consider him incompetent or barely in the story don't necessarily hate him. But there's a good amount who didn't enjoy his Clive persona, or vice versa, they would have preferred Clive stay. Number 4. Nimona. She's a very popular rival. A lot of people like the spin on both a rival and champion, and empathize with her desire to facilitate the protagonist's growth in order to receive a true challenge. Some are entertained by how battle crazy she is, while many others find it annoying and her motivations to be too straightforward. Some would even surmise that fans only like her more than similar rivals like Barry, cause she's a girl. You be the judge of that. Number 3. Penny the shadow leader of Team Star, who secretly tries to disband the group of misunderstood victims considering they have gone too far. Many fans relate to her troubles, personality, and even her design. They find her to be very realistic and fully understand her motivations and arc. She's a character constantly putting up a facade, hiding behind technology and sarcasm. But there are those who don't empathize with her plight, find her to be mean, and were put off by her crimes, as well as Cassiopeia's contrived mystery. Number 2. Iono VTubers and streamers generally tend to be controversial, so this IRL VTuber got much flack when she was first revealed. Many found her design and personality too over the top, and perhaps cringed at how she parodies influencers. But by now she's become one of the most popular gym leaders in Paldea, probably second to Larry. Most fans appreciate her battle and enthusiasm. At this point, her haters fully understand that they simply just don't like the tropes she represents or don't find her to be an accurate portrayal of streamers, while others think she hits the nail on the head, which makes her even more annoying. I think she's neat. And number one is... Gita. Some dub her Diantha 2.0 and consider her even worse because her single quality is just being the champion and not even a particularly compelling or tough one at that. She literally doesn't do anything in the game and many are baffled by how underwhelming her team is. Simply making Glimmera her lead would bump her up a tier because many fans still find her design and role compelling. There's an air of mystery to her that some find fascinating. She had potential, but Game Freak chose to shift focus to Nimona. Sometimes forgettable is worse than bad, but I hope you found this video memorable. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I have many videos ranking various aspects of Pokemon Generation, so make sure to check them out. Take a look at the description as well for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon, where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, and my Patreon Discord. You can also press the join button for the same rewards. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys very soon.